providing some pretty decent resistance up in this 134.74, between 134.70 and 135.50, some pretty strong resistance up there. Even after the central banks uh, pulled that little stunt on Tuesday, it had very little, uh, there was very little follow through. There was just so many sellers sitting up in between 135 and 36. And, and if you remember last week's Forex Weekly Outlook, uh, that's basically what I was saying. I expect to push towards the 130, somewhere between 134 and 135, where I believe the sellers will be camped out waiting. And of course we were, and they hammered it right back down. So when we come into our U.S. Swiss franc, basically a very similar position here, buying down into this 9130 level, very good play. Swiss National Bank clearly uh, doing a decent job weakening that franc and they've made it they've been quite vocal that they're going to continue so looking for quality places to buy US dollars and that's what Forex is we're buying or selling US dollars basically that's what most trading is these days to be perfectly honest risk on risk off right it's well it's dollar on dollar off also so when we look at these things uh, buying on dips down here is still a very good play on this particular currency pair uh, New Zealand US is uh, another one. I think that there, there you can see by our indicators that we are getting overbought on the predicted differences. However, the predicted MACD and the predicted TSI are not overbought, which is very interesting looking at this program. So uh, I think we're going to get another little push here, depending on what the Royal Bank of New Zealand does this week. But we can already start to kind of see some resistance building around this 79, 78, 75 level. Personally, I would look to probably sell into that area. We can see the previous highs were up in this level up here, up around uh, just under 81. But I think it's going to be a very tall order for a risk-based currency to get to that, to, to retrace to that kind of level. So I believe that we're going to, the risk is going to be off if not by midweek, by the latter part of the week, and certainly by next week, unless there is somebody pulls a rabbit out of a hat here, and everything, all the issues in the fi global financial systems and in, in the eurozone uh, dissipate. Uh, there's certainly not a risk-on environment here. So waiting for the opportunity to sell this thing, pretty good play. So right now, when this three-day predicted moving average from vantage point starts turning back down. Then we jump, we jump in there. Right now, we don't have a confirmed trend reversal on this. We're very close to that, but we don't have it yet, to be very, very clear. U.S. CAD, I, this was a good one, uh, a decent one this week. Uh, to my own guys, I was recommending longs on Friday, very risky trade, but I was long myself. And the reason I'm long is because the Canadian dollar is, again, uh, my anticipation is is that their employment report will not show good numbers. It will show that things in Canada are not what the what the the global marketplace thinks it is. And what I mean by that is we are showing the second straight month of no jobs. We are losing jobs in Canada. Another eighteen thousand. No new jobs have been created in Canada in two and a half, three months now. Two months consecutively. Uh, there's no upward revisions to the past month either. So uh, things are not looking as good as what most people think. And, and the, the Canadian dollar is, again, risk on, risk off. So we don't have this confirmed signal. We've got, we do have a, a makeshift sell signal, which is, uh, it is a good signal when we look at the medium term crossover here from vantage point and the long term crossover is down also. But will this continue? I don't think it will. I think that we're going to see a base around, if we can even get towards parity, my view is we use that as a very, very good buying opportunity. Uh, dollar yen, this is another one. Uh, we've been long most, we've been uh, buying for just over a week now. We, we, this is what we look for in uh, a potential trend reversal. First of all, when you see candles like this, they will almost always fail almost always. This is one of the reasons why last week I recommended and the weeks before that selling crude oil because when you get these big candles they're always followed by the market returning to the primary trend prior to whatever caused a, a ridiculous looking candle like this and sure enough the dollar yen goes back down. Now there's been a lot of job owning and everything else but the bottom line is we're moving higher and this is how the market 
uh, normally works. It goes up and it comes down. It goes up and it comes down. And we identify where the retracement area will be on an intraday basis and try and identify the primary trend. Using the vantage point, we can see going at the key level now, buying, by the way, 77.45, excellent buying, I think, in, in that area. And we should anticipate a move towards the seven, back towards at least the 79.50 before those uh, sellers may come back in. But if we break this down by crossover, you can see the short term is down. It's, it's showing some volatility. But the medium term crossover from over a week ago is still remaining strong. And the market is, its its vantage point is doing a good job of calculating this. Long-term crossover, same thing. It's telling us we're going higher. It, it, in combination with the predicted MACD and the predicted TSI, very good. Very good buying opportunity. A lot of people, some of the analysts will say, sell on strength. I'm saying buy on dips. And the primary trend is in, in the process of changing. Uh, now, I've also talked about in previous, we in these webinars that, you know, when you have a recession, depression, I'm going to be careful what language I use here, always comes in threes. <laughs> and it starts in the U.S. at the top of the food chain. It trickles into Europe and then it goes into the emerging markets. So from a, from a, a much longer term perspective, the dollar yen certainly looks like it has a lot of upside potential. So that's definitely something uh, that we want to continue to monitor. Uh, another one we have a look here, the spiders, the spy here. Another way of, of assisting us engaging these equity markets, we can see that this is starting to get very toppy here also. I can anticipate on the spies to start the week that it's going to move lower. This is another one, another classic case of buying the rumor, selling the fact. I think what we're going to see is a pretty substantial sell-off on this particular ETF. So we definitely want to keep an eye on that one because I think there'll be some very good opportunity uh, there also. So uh, again, this is the, uh, my name is Greg Furman, market analyst here at TraderPlanet.com. And this is the Forex Weekly Outlook for the week of December the 5th, 2011.